Why don't you tell me more about yourself? What were you like as a kid? Get into any after school activities? Hmm. Yeah, but maybe you won't believe me. Try me. All right. There are no clubs I wanted to join at Lincoln Elementary, the school I went to as a kid. Back then, nothing normal really interested me. So I remember being really excited when my teacher told me I could start my own club. All I had to do was get enough people to join, a minimum of five students. I knew just what kind of club I wanted. An alien club. It would be a club dedicated to the study and hunting of aliens. Something I was crazy about as a kid. I remember approaching the students I thought would be cool to have around, even if they didn't like aliens. I asked Josh first. He was a popular kid on the playground. All the boys wanted to hang out with him, and I was sure all the girls liked him. He was blonde and blue-eyed, with a habit for getting into trouble. Though I was seen as the weird kid, because I knew Josh, I was somehow acceptable to be around. When I first met Josh, he told me proudly that he had broken his arm three times on separate occasions. One of those times had been at school when he jumped from the top of the playground slide on a dare. He sounded brave and fearless as he retold his story. He boasted and said it didn't hurt, and he didn't even cry. <laughs> I find that hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, well, I never told him that I found out he was actually pushed down the slide and cried all the way to the nurse. Anyhow, Josh ended up joining my club, but I knew he wouldn't stay if I didn't get more people to join. So I asked my other friends, Eddie and Rachel. Eddie was dark-skinned and quiet. His parents were Cambodian and frequently cooked dishes I had never heard of. His clothes occasionally smelled odd with the scent of foreign foods. But this is actually normal, as I grew up in what's now known as Little Phnom Penh, or Cambodia Town. My friend Rachel was the girl I had met recently. Was she cute? <laughs> a bit. She was shy at first, but quickly warmed up to me and was the kind of girl that wouldn't be quiet when she got to talking. She followed me around like a little duckling. With Rachel telling me, I felt like I was really in command of something, like some big shot on the playground because I had a flunky, which now I realize was kind of messed up to think. But with Josh, Eddie, and Rachel, I had my makeshift club going. I just needed one more person to meet the minimum requirement. I asked around, but all the other kids thought the club sounded ridiculous, or they just found me way too weird. Without a fifth, we wouldn't be an official club. So I decided to impress everyone with the preemptive start of club activities. I believed if people saw how cool and interesting studying aliens were, they would want to join us. I guess that makes sense. So tell me what happened after that. I held my first alien club meeting after school. I told everyone in the club to meet me around a pre-K building. I had gathered up some books on UFOs and extraterrestrials from the library to show everyone. And also did a bit of reading myself so I would sound like I knew something about the subject. I explained what an alien was. UFOs, alien encounters, what Area 51 was. Rachel expressed some interest. Eddie was always indifferent to anything besides Pokemon and sports, and Josh only seemed to care when Rachel did. Okay, to be honest, I did like Josh and wanted him to stay in the club, so I didn't mind his newfound obsession since I knew Rachel would do anything I told her including leaving Josh alone. <laughs> Perhaps she liked you instead? I think 
She just wanted friends. She was a bit of a loner like I had been. Maybe that's why we were drawn to each other. Anywho, our first meeting only lasted 15 minutes because we all had to go home after school. I told everyone to go study up on aliens because the next time we would go do some alien watching. They said they would, but I knew they wouldn't. A few days later, I gathered everyone at recess. We met under the trees that lined the fence at the end of the basketball courts. On the other side of the fence was the street, a store strip and a fast food chicken place. I found a spot between the bushes and the trees where we could look out and began the careful alien watch. I'm sure they were thrilled with that. Huh, yeah. That day I informed everyone about the MIB, the men in black, who were not just characters from a movie. I explained who the real men in black were. I told them they were the guys that sent warnings to a person when they got too close to the truth. Honestly, the thought of that excited me. It was a sure way to know that you were on the right path. I told them we would be watching out for the MIB as well. Of course, Eddie didn't want to do it. He ran off to play some game with another friend. He didn't want to waste his recess looking for men in black suits. I bet. It did sound stupid when said aloud. And Rachel? Rachel stayed because I wanted her to, and so did Josh. I told them Eddie was just a chicken, and that they would be too if they ran away. How kind of you. And I was a bit of an asshole as a kid. <laughs> so, after agreeing to do the watch, I told them that they had to look closely and pay attention because the MIB could change their appearance at will. Anyone could be one. We sat for about 20 minutes, most of the time goofing around and suspecting people that were obviously not who we were looking for. Recess was almost over and both Josh and Rachel were tired of this game. They stood and went to talk about other things. <sighs> At this time, I knew Josh liked Rachel, and I kind of hated her for it. She was taller than me, with silky brunette hair. Of course Josh liked her. But she was supposed to be my friend, not a traitor. I thought you were more into girls. <laughs> I've never seemed to have a preference. So... What happened next? I turned back to the fence, brooding over Josh when the bell rung. I was about to get up when I saw a single man across the street, walking. He wore all black, with a hat on his head and a briefcase in one hand. He even wore black shades. I squinted at him and felt my heart lurch with excitement. A car rushed past, though, and suddenly, the man was wearing a brown suit. No shades. I blinked. I wasn't sure if it had always been brown or not. Perhaps you saw what you wanted to see. Hmm. Well, I got up and returned to class. After school was over, I told Eddie, Josh, and Rachel about what had happened when they left. They thought I was making it up, teasing them to make my club sound cool. Rachel said that I mentioned he was wearing brown instead of black, so how could he have possibly been MIB? I could do nothing but agree. It made me angry that Rachel didn't back me up like always, now that she had Josh on her side. But I walked home, by myself as usual. I told my mom I was big enough to do so. Plus, I only lived a few blocks away from home back then. On the way, I remembered what I had said earlier about the men in black. That they could change their appearance. I knew Rachel was wrong. I was right. I knew what I had seen. But let me guess. This wasn't the end. No, my dear. 
not by a long shot. It gets weirder. That night, I had a strange dream. I dreamed that I woke up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat. I didn't know what had woken me, but I just felt I had to be up. The house was quiet and dark. My brother was asleep in the bottom bunk and my parents' room was adjacent, their door closed. As always, the bathroom door that was across the hall facing my room was open. Its darkened threshold full of shadows and the faint, eerie glimmer of a mirror. I tried not to look into the darkness and a distorted blob of my reflection as I exited my room. I walked down the hall and into the next room the living area. I would stop and stare at the door. There was no knock, but somehow I knew someone was waiting just on the other side. I went to the door and reached out for the handle with a shaky hand. I had no clue why I felt so scared to turn that knob or who it was at the door so late but it was as if my hand was guided by some force. I had to open the door. My fingers closed around the handle and I pulled. Who was there? No one. There was nothing but the flickering of my porch light. I wanted to open the screen and look out, but decided against it. Something told me not to unlock the door. I quickly closed it. I didn't feel alone. I knew someone had been at the door and they were watching me. A fear would rush over me, so real and urgent that I woke up. I awoke sweating and shaking. I didn't ever want to have a dream like that again, but I kept having it every night. That's horrible. Yeah, just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. I would dream of answering the door to no one. I began losing sleep over it. And soon, I had decided to put off my alien club activities. This is when the dream stopped. And after a few days of pleasant sleep, I picked the club back up. I got out more books from the library I held a meeting again, even more focused on my search for aliens. I didn't tell my friend about my odd dreams or bring up that man in the brown or black suit again. But I was determined to learn more. And for a while, everything was fine. However, one day after school, my teacher congratulated me on starting my new club. I didn't know what she was talking about since I never got a fifth member, so I never made it official. We just kind of did her thing on the side. But she insisted I had. She said she met with some girl at recess, saying she was the fifth member. I asked who, and she said the girl's name was Mariella Isabel Book. I had never heard of this girl in any of my classes. I figured she was probably Cambodian and a transfer that moved to the area recently. I did want my club to be official though, so I didn't say anything about not knowing her. Before I left the class, my teacher said she forgot to tell me Mariella had left a note for me in my desk. I hadn't remembered any note before, but perhaps she had slipped it in when I went to the bathroom. So I went back to my desk and I stuck my hand in and searched till I felt a small folded piece of paper. I pulled it out and opened it. The paper looked too clean and white, like printer paper, except it was thick and slightly textured. Not something I had ever seen as a kid. The message was written in very fine and delicate curving letters no elementary kid would be able to write. Well, what did it say? 
Chills ran down my spine when I read the note with its graceful black letters. It said, I'm at the door. And was initialed by Mariella. I knew exactly what she meant, and it scared the hell out of me. This was no little girl, and I would never find her in any class. I never told my teacher about Mariella, or what the note said. Hell, I'm not even sure if my teacher ever saw her at all. I was absolutely petrified of what would happen if I mentioned her. From that day, I could feel eyes on me. I decided to end my club, but I still couldn't sleep at night. My parents had me see a doctor as a child. I was prescribed pills to help me sleep. I'm sorry you wouldn't do that. <sighs> Till this day, I still have trouble answering my front door. We're talking about aliens. <laughs> because I know I'm right. I know they were after me. Here. This is Mariella's full name. Tell me. What's her initials? M. I. B.